Did I enjoy my life the plague by Albert Camus? It is the writer's most renowned novel. Published June 10, 1947. The story unfolds in the Algerian city of Oran, and it tells how modern society is affected by an extraordinary circumstance that ends up altering and completely changing the lifestyle that it leads. Camus actually based it on a small plague outbreak that happened in 1931. It only had 76 cases, but he wanted to explore what would happen to society if that outbreak reached the point of no way out. The novel is written in the form of a diary, where the narrator's identity is kept anonymous so as not to hinder the narration. The point of view is as if the reader found the writings, and reading it discovers all the horror that was experienced in the quarantine of the city. It examines the routine in which the society is subjected, and how it cannot see the terminal danger in front of them, and how disease manages to end the hidden in which it lives and puts it in a place of primary survival. The story begins with Oran's description, a modern and engrossed city, where it is only suitable for those healthy. There lives the doctor Bernard Rear, who had to send his wife out of town because she was ill and needed to move outside to get better. One day, Dr. Rear discovers a dead rat on the landing of his house. When picking it up, the doorman, Michelle says strangely, it had to be brought from outside. In this building, there are no rats. But the number of dead rats increased rapidly. The municipal service began cleaning them and discovered that in one day, the number went from 6,000 to 8,000. And the people's concern also increased. Then they did stop dying, and everything seemed to be back to normal. But then Michelle appeared with strange symptoms like fever, neck abscesses, and vomiting blood. We ordered him to be transferred to a hospital, but inside the ambulance, and just before reaching the hospital, he died. On the other hand, Jim Taro appeared in the story, a modern historian who carried with him notebooks where he wrote down everything he saw, allowing to give concise data of what was happening. Greer was called by an old patient of his, Joseph Grand, telling him about his neighbor's suicide attempt, Quattered. Greer also encountered more cases similar to Michelle's in the city, and saw that the newspaper did not report human deaths so as not to alarm the rest of the inhabitants, which she had not done with the dead rats. Greer finally understood the problem of the situation, when the number of deaths increased rapidly with the days. Together with his companion, Dr. Castle, they concluded Greer's fears that they were facing the bubonic plague epidemic. We recalled the plague epidemic that had in some countries in Europe with a figure of 100 billion deaths. For him, the epidemic could not end with the ran, that the death toll in the city rose higher and higher. Dr. Rear and his partner, Dr. Richard, met with the city's doctors. All of them concluded in treating the epidemic with preventive measures to avoid a high number of deaths and infections. The doctors went to work, but as the deaths increased, they noticed that the measures would be insufficient and that they would need government help. Talking to the prefect, they confirmed that it was the plague and that they should close the city. In doing so, the inhabitants began to feel isolated from the world. Attempts were made to communicate with others, but the gods saw the magnitude of the epidemic and prohibited all types of communication. It was allowed to enter Iran, but not leave, and many did not want to risk it. The plague epidemic also affected the city's commerce, as no transport could enter. Inside the citizens fell like slaves, but the disease continued to take lives. We felt tired, but what affected him most was that his wife was not next to him, and this worried him even more. Some of the inhabitants tried to leave the city at any cost, without any result. The heat reached her end, but the citizens could not enjoy it. We were together with the prefect, of whom a volunteer to take care of hospitalized patients. Terry conversed with Raymond Rambit, a journalist who had traveled to the city to investigate the quality of life in the Arab Quarter. The two foreigners discussed the consequences of the epidemic. However, some of the residents soon tired of exile. Some rebelled and the city became chaotic. Some started fires while others robbed shops and houses. This led to more severe measures such as executions imprisonment and the turning off of the lights during the late hours of the night. The high number of deaths did not allow the deceased to be buried individually, though they were thrown into groups, and funerals were not allowed. The number of deaths continued to advance, 
though instead of burying them, it was decided to incinerate them. This alerted many citizens, as they thought they could get the plague through smoke, and the government had to take other measures, though it was decided to leave them on the streets until they rotted. The months passed in the uncertainty of when it would end continued in the city. The residents were in low spirits, and there was an atmosphere of solitude everywhere. The epidemic was progressing, and Dr. Rear noticed that he was getting more and more tired, since he only slept for hours a day. His job became to just diagnose and isolate patients. And what frustrated him the most was not being able to heal everyone. Rear and his companions were exhausted, but the only thing that could be good about the plague was Cotard. This for him the epidemic was a metaphor to understand that there are worse things in the world, such as low self-esteem, cancer, tuberculosis. The sale terror told Cotter that what the citizens of Oran needed was to think of the hope that the epidemic would end and they could get back to doing the things they longed for. They both organized weekly orchestras in Oran. They tried to distract residents. On the other side, Roma began to feel somewhat strange symptoms after drinking a few drinks. He felt pain in the armpits and groin. But the suspicion of plague was ruled out, and the intense rhythm of life that he led was associated. Rambut in terror visited Dr. Rear at the hospital. And in addition to being surprised by the number of patients, they discovered that the city judges had not contracted the disease. Upon receiving it, Rear made the decision to test the serum that Dr. Castle had developed to combat the plague. However, the results were not as expected, and little Jack died of the disease. His parents were present while he died, and consequently they were isolated to prevent further spread of the epidemic. Christmas time has come, but because of the epidemic, Christmas became very different. The cold, the loneliness, and the isolation affected the parties, as well as the fact that infants were lacking to celebrate them. Among all this, it was discovered that Gren was sick with the plague, which worried Rear. The doctor gave him up for dead, but suddenly at an unexpected turn, he fully recovered from the disease. At the same time, Dr. Rear began to see that more similar cases were presented, cheering up the medical community. Finally, an air of hope arose in Oran. The complete recoveries of the patients placed the rest of the citizens. Although the disease continued taking lives, like that of the commissioner Thun, the city realized that the end of the epidemic had begun, and little by little buys cafes and cinemas open, and they also allowed the prices of the products. But the fear of contracting the disease continued, as well as fear of how to start again once the epidemic will take root. Before the city gates opened, there were fellow with the plague. He remained inside his hotel room, accompanied by Rear. He did everything possible to avoid his death. He applied the serum of Dr. Castle, but the plague ended by ending the historian's life. The doctor mourns his death. As soon as during the epidemic, the two had become very good friends. And they had shared many moments together. In addition, we were also received a telegram where the death of his wife was reported. Lord's stars opened, and slowly the relatives of the citizens returned from their cell outside the city. Cotter, on the other hand, was arrested for locking himself in his room and shooting from his window. We are patient announces tribute to citizens of victims of the epidemic. The plague led him to the conclusion that in men there are more things worthy of admiration than contempt. He revealed that the narrator of the story was himself, and that you should not sing victory because the epidemic could return. Albuquerque is considered a philosopher of the absurd. He used his novels as a showcase for his existential theory. His philosophy highlights the moment in which modern man discovers at a certain point in his life that life is meaningless. This presents him with three possible ways out. Through nihilism and suicide. The leap to religious belief. By pure acceptance. The plague is considered one of the peak novels of this philosophy. And awarded him as the Nobel Prize for Literature. The central theme of the novel is human solidarity. That in the face of a terminal situation where life is placed in imminent danger, the will to solidarity is stronger than the purely animal instinct. An example of this in the story is terror. In the novel, society goes from not taking the epidemic very seriously to reaching the point of fear of quarantine. 
but then the disease is overcome. The side two returns to normal, forgetting what happened, and the story ends with a show of honor to the victims who did not survive. Have you read The Plague by Albert Camus? If you want more book summaries, remember to like this video and subscribe. Until the next video.